In this lecture, we will first introduce a useful probability bound called Markov inequality. And after that, we will define what is meant by moments and what is meant by variance. And then we will discuss some property about the variance. Let's start. Okay, so Markov inequality is stated as follows. Suppose x is a random variable that takes on non-negative values only. Then, for any positive value a, the probability that x is greater than or equal to a will be less than or equal to expected of x divided by a. Now, notice that when we apply Markov inequality, we have to be very, very careful. The random variable x has to take on only non-negative values. If it is not this case, then the inequality will not hold. And then the meaning of this one is like this. Suppose that we have some idea about the value of expected of x. Then we can make use of this to show that the chance for x to be super super large will not be, will not be a lot. As a increases, the chance of x greater than or equal to a will become smaller and smaller. So this is the nature of or the intuitive meaning of Markov inequality. So graphically, so suppose that this is the case of the probability distribution of the random variable x. x may take on different values and for each of these positive or non-negative values, x will have certain probability to occur. Now, what we are interested in, what is the chance that x is greater than or equal to a? So we have the value a here, we make a vertical bar here. So we are actually interested in the total area in this green region. And we want to show that the total area of this green region is bounded by a function of a. So it is less than or equal to the expected value of x divided by a. We are going to show the Markov inequality in three different ways. This is our first proof. The first proof is by the definition of expected of x. So for expected of x, it is equal to the summation of all the possible values of j multiplied or weighted by the probability that x is equal to j. Then for this summation, we can separate them into two different parts. The first one is we consider only values of j such that it is less than a. And for the other part, we consider the values of j greater than or equal to a. So we separate this summation into two different summations. This focus on j less than a, this focus on j greater than or equal to a. So we have the same formula inside, but then we have two summations. Now for the first part, we know that j is less than a, but then this is a random variable value x that can take on. So in that case, the value of j in any case will be greater than or equal to zero. So what we are going to do here is that we change the value of j here, all of them to be zero, so that we maintain this is greater than or equal to sign. And similarly, for the other summation, any value of j that we considered here is greater than or equal to a. So again, this time, we turn every j here, although they could be different from the beginning, but now we turn every j here into little a. So again, we maintain the greater than or equal to uh, uh, relationship. Now the first summation, because it is now changing j to 0, so the first summation will be equal to 0. And then for the second summation, you can put a outside because a is independent of j. So it will be a multiplied by the summation of all the cases of j such that probability of x is equal to j. So in other words, the summation part will give us the probability of x greater than or equal to a. So in the end, we will have this relationship. Expected of x is greater than or equal to a times probability of x greater than or equal to a. So we get the desired result. So this is the first proof. Now for the second proof, we make use of the conditional expectation formula. 
So again, we begin with expected of x. So this expected of x can be rewritten as the weighted sum of the conditional expectation. So here, we, we separate the whole outcome, the whole sample space, into two different uh, subsets. First, it is x is less than a. The other is x is greater than or equal to a. So by the conditional expectation formula, expected of x could be written as the expected of x given the first case, x is less than a, weighted by the corresponding probability that it occurs, plus the expected of x given the other case, x is greater than or equal to a, and weighted by the corresponding probability, x is greater than or equal to a. Now, again, we, we, we are using similar idea as we used in the first proof. So here, the first, so in this case, expected of x given x is less than a. So this is focusing on the random variable x. Although we are having this in this condition, we will see that no matter what happens, the value of x that we consider here when we compute this expectation will always be greater than or equal to zero. So we change this expected value here, all of them to zero, so we can give the greater than or equal to sign here. And similarly, for this second conditional expectation, so we know that x is greater than or equal to a. So the expected value of x in this given condition is always greater than or equal to a. So we change this whole expected value here to a. So again, 0 times probability of x is less than a will, will be gone, and we are left with a times probability of x greater than or equal to a. So we again get the same relationship as we obtained from the first proof, and from this we can derive the desired result. Okay, we now have a third proof. This proof is by using indicator, and I think this proof is quite interesting, not intuitive. So we first define i to be an indicator. So this i can take on values 0 and 1 only, and then it is equal to 1 if and only if x is greater than or equal to a. So i will be 0 when x is less than a, and i will be 1 when x is greater than or equal to a. And for this indicator i, we observe that no matter what happens in every situation, the value of x divided by a will be greater than or equal to i. So let's check, okay? So there are two cases that we consider. One is x is greater than or equal to a, the other is x is less than a. So when x is greater than or equal to a, i will be 1. So this part, the right hand side will be 1. The left hand side will be some x greater than or equal to a. So in that case, this value will be something greater than or equal to 1. So this value will be greater than or equal to i. Now for the other case, x is less than a. Now when x is less than a, although we, we don't know the value of x, but then we still have some idea because x can only take some non-negative values. So when x is less than a, that means that x is always still is still greater than or equal to 0. So when x is less than a, the i value will be 0. But the left hand side x over a will be still some non-negative values. So again, x over a is greater than or equal to i. Now we remember this one. So the, because this is true, so we can take the expected value of this random variable and also the expected value of this random variable. And we will see that the expected value of this random variable is greater than or equal to the expected value of this random variable. The reason is that we use the microscopic view because for each possible outcome, the left-hand side is greater than or equal to the right-hand side. So when you plug in the formula to compute the expected value, we will see that every term by term, the left-hand side will be greater than or equal to the right-hand side. So this is what I want to say. Expected value of x over a will be greater than or equal to the expected value of i. Now for the left hand side, because a is a constant, we have actually shown that expected value of c times x for some constant c is equal to c times expected of x. So for the left hand side, 
This is equal to 1 over a multiplied by ex. So this is exactly ex over a. And for the right hand side, right hand side is the expected value of a indicator. So this is the same as the probability that i is equal to 1. And i is equal to 1 if and only if x is greater than or equal to a. So the right hand side is exactly this term probability of x greater than or equal to a. Now we combine these two together, so we will have expected x divided by a is greater than or equal to probability of x greater than or equal to a. So again, we prove that Markov inequality is correct. Okay, so let's take a break. So this is the end of part one.